Welcome everybody uh, to Sylvia's amazing Fog Singles group. And can I tell you, I'm so happy that you've brought me into this group because I'm having a ton of fun. Awesome. A ton of fun because there's so many people to talk to. And one of them is Mark. And Mark tonight is representing the men not all the men because i mean there isn't any single person who represents everybody no matter who it is that we talk to you know the answers that we give they're generalities right so it's going to apply to some people and it's you know not going to apply to others take what you want leave what you want it's all good exactly yeah everybody's different everybody's we all different. resonate with something different that is true. Like we do. And yeah. we have different parts in our yeah. life. So um, good advice. So you guys, so uh, as we're starting right now, just give me like any kind of clue if there's any technical difficulties going on. Uh, we got a better mic this time. So let me know what you think of the sound quality. I think we got the video quality down. It's looking pretty good on my computer right here. Um, Mark is going to ask some questions. And I, I want to hear you. I want to know what you think about what he's saying. I want to know what's resonating with you. If there's questions that pop up for you, I want you to go ahead and ask them. Uh, you know, Sylvia and I, we, we're just going to have fun with this. Hopefully, Mark is going to have fun too. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> hot seating him tonight. We are totally hot seating Mark, and I like it because he came here to be a little bit dissected, which is always fun for me. Um, I don't have a choice. So whatever she says goes. Boss I'm, lady. You know, I, I like to say my husband thinks I'm smart because I say he's always right. Um, so it's kind of nice to hear that I'm the boss sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was in every relationship is some give and take. Okay, Mark, I want to know what's your first question? Uh, okay. Um, where is the best place to meet other singles? Where is the best place to meet other singles? I really don't think there is a best place. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, ideally, you want to meet people through people because there's already a vetting process mm, in place. A connection already. Yes. Yeah. Not, not, well, so not, much. not a connection, but there's a... Um, insight. Insight, yeah. Insight into potentially whether or not this person is going to be compatible, mm. right? And that's the big word is compatibility because it's easy to get in a relationship. Yeah. I think we all know how easy it is to get in a relationship. Every single person who's our age has been in a relationship and is no longer in a relationship. Yeah. So getting in one is easy. Choosing the right one is the hard part. Is the hard part. Because my whole goal, like what I strive to help you guys do, is avoid the bounce. Mm -hmm. The bounce out. I want you to bounce in and then stay and make it work. Yeah. And have what you want. Mm -hmm. That's what I want for you. Um, so ideally word of mouth. I know you, I know someone else. I think about your characteristics. I think about theirs. I think you guys will do well together. Mm. So meeting people, right? Making new friends, widening your circle of acquaintances yeah. so that they can get to know you and then start thinking about other people they know. So, you know, potentially every single person you meet is an additional 10 people. Mm -hmm. So the more people you meet, the more the you're more compounding you your opportunities. Okay, I, I, I do see that. Yeah. Um, with that being said, how does someone who's not well, who doesn't do well with small talk? Mm -hmm. I hate small talk. I'm the same way. I loathe small yeah. talk. I can't, I can't, I have a hard time asking about the weather. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's one of the big, the big things is how to, to get to do the small talk, to get to, you know, to get to know, know someone, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, there's, there's a few things that you kind of 
there's you want to check some things off mm -hmm. right you you do you know what you're looking for like that's a good place yeah. to start um one of the things that i i help people do is clarify because mm -hmm. one of the things that i say is like attracts like so if you're thinking i'll know it when i find it mm -hmm. that's what you're going to find is somebody who says, I'll know it when I find it, but they haven't thought about what they need. Mm -hmm. So they're actually going out confused. You're going out confused. When you say, I'll know it when I find it, it's because you don't know what you want. Yeah. And you're thinking when something, when something wakes you up, that's going to be it mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. But if you don't know specifically what it is that you need, like, do you need somebody with kids? Because, you know, you don't have kids yet, but you want kids, but you're thinking it's, you know, maybe, maybe you're thinking it's too old. I'm too old to do the baby thing, Yeah. but I still want to father in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to meet a woman who has children and, and I don't mind being a father figure instead of a father. Yeah. Like that was something for me because I decided not to have kids, um, in my first marriage and I had my tubes tied. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we divorced and I was looking for a relationship, I was very open to meeting somebody who had kids because my, my mindset was just because I decided not to, doesn't mean I don't want a mother. Yeah. Um, so that's something that you should figure out. Maybe you don't want any kids. Maybe you think it's, it's, it's an element you want to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's a big question to answer kids or no kids in my future partner. Um, so knowing that before you go out, instead of saying, well, I'll figure it out when I get there. That's a good thing to know because when you meet those people and you're talking about what you want and you say, I'd like to meet somebody with kids or I don't want to meet somebody with kids, then when they're thinking about prospects for you, they're taking off those boxes for you too. Yeah. And knowing what you want means that you can cut through the small talk yeah. and find out really quickly, does this person have compatible, like fundamental compatibilities, oh, yeah. right? Do you want to go to church on Sundays? Then you need to know, does she go to church on Sundays? With the kid factor right mm -hmm. is there a certain age that you're tapping out at like they have to be older than this yeah. kind of thing know that ahead of time so that you can ask those questions it sounds like small talk but what you're really doing is betting yes answers. okay yeah yeah so yeah. if you're going somewhere where you have an interest already the small talk doesn't necessarily have to be like dry no no right like yeah. if you come to a spiritual event and yeah. you know you're talking about yeah. like ghosts and stuff you can have fun with it yeah. so i think i actually think meeting people can be the same as like meeting friends mm -hmm. right like everybody has met a friend somewhere or you met a friend through a friend but, or you were at a hockey game like why can't you find a potential suitor mm -hmm. at a venue that you enjoy mm -hmm. right and then you just shoot the shit basically yeah. right yeah, well, make, I, like you make it easy. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I think I think in my experience, there's I mean, there, there's a lot of good men out there. Um, but a lot of those good men are hardworking men, too. Yes, And that's the thing that that really, you know, it makes them hard to find it makes them hard because to find they're at work. Because they're busy working. Yes. Um, yeah. With that being said, though, if you find the right man, he will take the time to go after her. Yeah. So. You know? And, and we were saying this on, uh, on Facebook the other day and Corey was chiming in on this. Um, you know, I, one of the things that I said is, um, good men are diamonds in the rough mm -hmm. and you have to be a unique woman to attract them. And I mean, mm, you're, you're going to hate me for saying this, but when a woman says, when a woman, not a girl says to a man, not a guy, I like her, I want to see where this goes, but I don't kiss for three months. Something in a man's mind goes selective female, mm -hmm. not plaything. Yeah. Serious woman. Mm -hmm. And a hardworking man is looking for a serious woman. Mm -hmm. Is he not? Yes. I, I, and I, I don't want to say this for everybody, but yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's dating in 2018, 2019. That's half the battle is trying to figure out are they a play thing or are they something serious? Well, everybody's so you know, broken. Because, because people well, are vague. Well, it's not that they're broken. It's just they're vague. Let me ask you this. Yeah. As a man, as a hardworking man, um, you know, it really takes a very short period of like, okay, let, let me kind of dial it back. How long does it take you to figure out is this a play thing or is this serious? 
usually three or four days at least. Okay. Um, just a lot, a lot of it depends on the vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, some people you can actually conversations lead you in such a way where you know you can see it potentially leading up to something. Other ones they're a little bit more shallower, and it's just you know it's that's all it's going to be. You know, so I, I, I really de it depends on the two people. Yeah. And the dynamic of those two people meeting, you know. What kind of things would she say and do that distinguishes her and puts her in this serious woman category? That's a difficult one. Um, let me think on that one because that that's that's something I. It's it's hard to say. I I think it's a lot of it just depends on. Um, on just how how you interact with someone you know if things flow easily if things go well it, it could go both ways you know i think a lot of it it gets pulled back when red flags come up that's when you know if something looks serious at the beginning a red flag comes up then it then becomes you know what maybe this should just be a play thing because okay. i'm seeing the red flags coming yeah. up yeah you know so I think both men and women do, both men and women do that. They, you know, if they're having a good time with a person, they see the red flags, that tells them to pull in the reins and just keep it as a entertainment more right. than anything else, <clears throat> you know? How does she know when you've mentally done the switch from serious to entertainment? Um, I, 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 to me, I think a lot of a lot of men are very direct about it. Like they, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, men are runners," and they don't they they don't hide that. But I think if the man's ready and he's serious, mm -hmm. you'll know probably within the first fifteen minutes. However, guys will sit there and they'll talk to you all day, even if they have no intention of keeping you around, unless like past like sex. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but they yeah. will sit there and they'll talk to you all day. So for, as a woman, you're, you are getting mixed messages. <laughs> but a lot of it depends on the conversation as well. Can, yeah. I mean, can, okay, let's ask this question. Can a man or a woman be friends? Yes. Okay. So with that being said, that whole period is a time where men and women are actually interacting and both of them have the decision to make whether this could be serious or not. Mm -hmm. But I think, if women and men don't communicate, then how are they supposed well, to know? That's the problem because you know? like um, you're sitting there and you're talking about like everyday things, work, mm -hmm. this and that. You're not necessarily talking about, no, you're not doing the dirty talk. You're actually like having normal conversations. So you don't yeah. really know how the other person is feeling, you know? No, you, you definitely don't. But I think that that's human nature. People yeah. have to communicate that. I mean, that's the social yeah. aspect of it. And, I think once you once you get into a position where you're actually going on dates, then that becomes more clear, you know. Um, and perhaps that's the difference right there is going on a date versus just hooking up. Yes, for sure. Right, like that would I, I'm going to assume that would be like the key to everything because somebody who's going to mm. who just wants something for a night. Yeah. He's not going to spend the money to oh, talk to you and blah, blah, blah. And then during the day, they're just bored. Yeah. Well, they're just kind of maintaining their, their playtime. Yeah, for sure. But I think there's a whole aspect too, where, you know, that, I mean, to define what dating is, because to some people dating is just going out and having a good time. Other people, it's actually, you know, being chivalrous and opening the door for her, bringing her flowers and doing all those things. That to me so, is dating. That's, <laughs> you know, that's to me, that's dating. Yeah. You know, but in this day and age, it's not like it was when our parents were dating or no, even when we, were, when we were younger. It's not like that. You can, you can totally see it in the group. Yeah. Like just the, the way people talk and how they function and what they're looking oh, for. Like it's, 100%. it's, it's all, right there in black and white yeah. and if you i think if you're serious about dating you can spot those people just like that from mm. social media yeah um uh, i don't know i 
I think social media is a, a very, very dangerous thing when it comes to to trying to find the right person, you know, because you can paint yourself to be anyone you want to be online. But yeah. when it comes down to meeting them face well, to face, it can but be that's, a very different person. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Like, that's why I don't like online dating. Mm -hmm. Like, I've met people online, but I'm, I'm, I got to go somewhere and I got to meet you with a group of friends yeah. because mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't like the whole dating thing because you know, you, you never know what you're going to get. No, well you, well, you don't, you know, um, I, I, I don't, I'm on dating sites, but I don't, it's not my preference. Um, a lot of it is just due to time constraints. That's how people end up on online dating for for people that are serious about yeah. it, it's just they don't have the time to get out. But and, that's honestly, it's so it it is the way of the world right it now. Is. Like whether you like it or not. <laughs> Let me ask you this: the way of the world. Um, do you think most of the men, the hardworking ones, uh, do you think most of them are using online dating just because of that time constraint? To a certain degree, um, I myself, I I work. 10 hours a day mm -hmm. in Toronto. So I'm gone from 5, 5.30 in the morning. I don't get home till 6 o'clock at night. Right. And sometimes it's for five days a week, seven days a week. Yeah. It, it depends on, on the industry or wherever you work. But I think that's one of those things where it's just to mm -hmm. sit on your couch and just do that swiping thing. It's a lot easier than actually going to an event or something and actually mm -hmm. trying to meet people. Like it's... So, um, so there's... You know, for for the women who are out there going, okay, how can I tell? Mm -hmm. How can I tell the good men from, you know, and and I use I use a certain language when I talk about this. Guys, selfish short term thinkers, men, generous long term thinkers. Um, that way, like it just kind of facilitates. Uh, you know, so if if a woman is going online, how how can she separate the guys from the men when she's looking at profiles? I'm not a woman, and I couldn't tell you. What does your profile look like? Um, my, my profile's basically me. It's who I am. How many pictures? Um, I think I've got about five or six. Okay. I and would say. how long is your write up? Um, right now I, on, on plenty of fish, I don't have my profile up. I've mm -hmm. taken it down. Yeah. Um, I'm on Bumble and the Bumble one is a very, very simple. Short and just, easy. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's superficial with what it is. Yeah. You know, it's basically swipe left, swipe right. Bumble is where women meet men, where they make the advance. They make the advance, yes. Yeah. Now, does it give you more options to enter more information? I believe it does, yes. Okay. You can, you can add a longer profile, pictures, um, just your characteristics and your details and stuff like that. Okay. But uh, it's, it's one of those things. It's, you know, a man can swipe a thousand pictures and yeah. maybe get two hits so it's bumble hasn't been for me it hasn't been a good good place to meet people um i would recommend writing more about yourself mm -hmm. if you can mm -hmm. if, if it gives you that option to um you know write a bio and have it be yeah. like 500 words um because i i think that women and and I mean, like, I, I want to say, I think that women are looking for men who are writing more about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but then I remember that there's a lot of women who are falling for, you know, pretty. Mm -hmm. So I just looked at the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think kind of like the, the, the ultimate takeaway from all this is it almost doesn't even matter what the profile looks like. Um, but wait, you, wait, 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 hold up. But with the pictures, yeah. I like the ones that are interesting, right? Like on a boat yeah. or something like a hobby. Do you know what I mean? Not like, yeah. not like not fish pictures. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Just no, I, whatever I, I, you, I you're in with pictures. the camping or, um, yeah. just something different, whatever, beside a barbecue, just something that kind of gives you a little bit more like, Oh, okay. So this is what he's like naturally versus yeah. well, like the studio see, picture, right? I, th I think, and I will touch on this because I'm kind of in a similar situation. Um, my social circle isn't very big. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens is if you want a genuine picture of a person, a selfie doesn't cut it. 
Man. If you want a picture of a person having a good time, he's got to be out in a social setting. And a lot of guys don't like the picture taken to begin with. So it's hard to get a genuine smile from a lot of guys. Um, I, I myself, I don't have perma smile. Mm -hmm. I walk around straight face, but if I'm in a good mood, you'll know it. You can, you can, I smile with my eyes. Right. Um, and most people know that, yeah. that know me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a difficult thing for men because that's just the masculinity coming out where, you know, oh, I don't smile and it's, you kind of have to look a little bit deeper than that. Not just, not just, Oh, you know, he's good looking. He's got a great smile. So he must be a good guy. Yeah. Because, yeah. but it doesn't work that way. I, I, and know? this is something that I say to women is, um, w when you meet a good man, you will know a side of him that nobody else knows. Absolutely. Nobody 100%. else knows. Yeah. You will not know the depth of their, like nobody else knows how generous they are, yeah. but the woman they love. No one else knows how sweet they are, but the woman they love. Like it is, it is incredible. When you find a man, it is gold. Like when I say diamond in the rough, I mean, oh, it is the most precious human you can ever find. Like, yeah. um, because again, like it, it feels great to see a depth to somebody that, that, you know, again, nobody else does because you feel special. You, you get to peel back all the layers um, because men are very protective of themselves. They're protective of their time and of their energy and their resources. Mm -hmm. um, you know, good men protect, profess and provide. Men are like onions. Mm -hmm. You've got to peel them back layer by layer. Yeah, because there will be tears, there will be laughter, there'll be all of it. But it's just you actually have to. I mean, we're all damaged at, to a degree. Yeah. Well, we're all human. Well, we're all human, exactly. Mm -hmm. And what it is is just sometimes you just gotta take your time peeling back those layers, and eventually, when you get to that middle layer, you know, it's it's really really good. You know. Yeah, it's. I have friends. Uh, I've, I've, I have friends that I've had for as long as I've known my husband and they're, they're saying to me now, 12 years later, I never knew how funny Dennis was mm -hmm. because he just, you know, and, and they'll say, oh, he's shy or, or, and I'm like, no, 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 no. He's observing. He's figuring out whether or not you're worth the conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, so, um, oh, just, you just gotta find that man. And then, and then we do come damaged. Mm -hmm. But I like to say that we come together to heal each other, yeah. you know, in, in the right relationship, you start undoing the damage that life has given you, which is good. Well, behind, I mean, I always, I've always been of the opinion that behind every good man, there's a good woman, but vice versa as well. Absolutely. Because yeah. That's ultimately what everyone wants. You, know? you got to find the kind of partner that you take the time being the pillar of support. Yeah. And that's, that's how you back each other up and help each other grow, grow big time. We got some comments here. Uh, so Charles says the women in Bumble are much more selective, but much higher quality. What do you think of that? I, I would tend to agree. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also think there are a lot of good looking women on there mm -hmm. and it makes you, it makes me wonder sometimes, um, you know, there, there's certain things about people and it's, I think, yes, you can be very selective with your list, but I think you miss out on a lot of people, a lot of good people by not actually looking at, you know, the regular guy just, yes. you know, who, who's not, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, guys are regular. We're but not. But I think guys do that too. And you can see it in the group. If a good looking girl comes up, they're like, hey, well, oh, yes, hey, definitely. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and then an average girl who might have an amazing job and maybe like no kids for somebody and, yeah. and whatever, whatever. And they'll just be like, hey. oh, yes. It, or she'll be a tad overweight and no, like nothing. Yes. Right. And it's like, but appearances change, weight changes. Like, no, it, it, it all does. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> but I, I think it, it's one of those things where, um, like, especially on Bumble, it's just, you know, there's probably the ratio. I mean, if you look at just the ratio itself, there's probably, oh, maybe, let's say it's 10 men to one woman. So the woman 
and she's getting oh yeah all this way ding, 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 ding. and the guy is maybe <laughs> one every yeah. 30 or 40 unless he's you know he's got the fancy car there or, or something yeah. just to catch her attention well you know? that's why i like the interesting pictures to yeah. be honest with you yeah. because like on plenty of fish when i was on there back in the day yeah i got a hundred messages yeah. and then the same damn guys would message me like hello and i'm like goodbye yeah. you know and it was like jesus christ right but if you have something interesting going on it's it's a little bit more of a just like an added bonus or, or yeah. uh, just something that sticks, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? If a woman is average looking, mm -hmm. what can she say that would be interesting? Take interest in the guy. So she, she should show it first. I, I, I would think so, yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're really interested, you, you know, if, you're, if a woman is interested in the guy, take the time to send them a message that, you know, like they always tell men, you know, find something in her profile, find mm -hmm. something in his profile and, and make a comment about it mm -hmm. and break the ice that way. Yeah. You know, um, I think a lot of guys have taken that advice, you know, ever since social data or online dating has become a thing. And a lot of guys do that. They look for that little tidbit in, in the profile and they act on it. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of it. Right. And the response I've gotten have been for the most part, no response at all whatsoever. Right. So I think that takes. I can say that they do not do that. <laughs> I, I have guys oh. talking to themselves in my inbox all the time. Yeah. And okay. it's just well, like, but, but, hello, hello, but, beautiful. Okay, hello. so there, there is a good flag. If the guy is actually takes the time to actually, you know, make a comment that's kind of not out of the norm, mm -hmm. then maybe there's something more to it. So not just hi, not hi just beautiful, hi, how how's are your you? day? You know? Yeah. Um, well, people if, don't want to feel like, they want to feel special. Well, that's, that's the thing. They want to yeah. feel special like you did show interest in that. Yeah, men, men want that just as much as women do. If a woman came up to you at a coffee shop mm -hmm. or wherever, and she said, I just had to come over and say, I really think you need to come to my house and cut down some trees. Okay. Um, and then, she, and then you know, you would have, you would laugh. Yeah. And then she'd go, um, are you from around here? Mm -hmm. And you say, where you're from? And then she'd go, oh, that's awesome. So what do you do? And then you say what you do. You'd have a little back and forth, a mm -hmm. couple minutes, no more. And then she says, I have to go, but I'd love to grab a coffee with you sometime. Here's my email address. Why don't you send me an email and we'll get together. And then she leaves. What would you do? For an average looking woman who did this? I would probably give her a chance. I mean, right there, if she's made you laugh, I mean, it made me laugh because I'm thinking, is it just because I'm wearing plaid? <laughs> but, but that's what it is. You know, if something just catches you off guard and it kind of gives you that, huh, okay, then it just progresses from there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's just one of those things. I think it's, a lot of it is timing, you know, yeah. at the right place at the right time. Yeah. You know, and, and even for the average looking person, you know, uh, I don't think it's, that's just a thing for good looking people. That's for everybody. You'll totally remember that. Like in your dating yeah. history, you'll, you'll always <laughs> okay. be like, this yeah. woman asked yeah. me because I still remember the day where this guy wrote me a fairy tale. Yeah. But then I was like, he sends that to everybody. So oh, no. don't feel special. Copy and paste. Yes. Yeah, like a <laughs> yes. whole story. But I'll never forget it. I mean, but, I, but Sylvia, so I think you can, I mean, if you really read profiles or, or messages, you can really tell who's doing the cut and paste and who's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying, you know? right? Like, it'll still stick. Yeah. I mean, for, for my example, it's stuck in the wrong way. Yeah. But your example would stick in the right way, right? Like, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. You'll remember that. Oh, for sure. Okay, so, so Ainsley, point, Chantel. Ainsley has a question. She says, curious, what makes a woman to be considered higher quality? Hmm. Um, I think it's very similar to what men are. It's goals. Do you have goals, long-term goals, short-term goals? Um, are you passionate about something? Um, I think it, it's just certain characteristics like that really, you know, really make the difference. Mm -hmm. 
So basically it would be like this, it would be the same thing as what we look for in men. Yeah, to a degree, you know. Um, like I don't, characteristic I, I don't and think moral wise. Men aren't looking for obedient women. They want, men like fire and feistiness. They want you to have an opinion. Exactly. Sassy. You know, but Without with the that princess? being said, if you disagree, don't cut the guy down. Because then you want that that's that will shut a man down and then he just stops talking, he withdraws, and then you're left wondering why is he doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, why he doesn't talk very much. Well, it's because it's just the dialogue between men and women. Women tend to do it in such a way they're smart about it. I and I'll give them that. Mm -hmm. They're smart because they can cut a guy down and half the time he doesn't even realize he's being cut down. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's happened to me and until it becomes repetitive, then you pick up on it. And then right. it's like, well, wait a minute here now. And then that's, that's when men start to withdraw right away. Yeah. You but know? I think it, that also depends on the human being, like, and where you are in life, like, and what you will and will, will not put out well, with, definitely. because like, like some guys are just doormats, plain yes. and simple. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and let me rephrase that. Some guys will put up with anything for sex. Some guys will put up. Or for the potential of sex. For sex or even affection. Mm. Well, it, depending on, yeah, again, where they are in life. On, yeah. Then yes, because I see guys all the time in the group and I'm just like, oh, why? Yeah. Right? But um, to, like it's, it depends on their life. That's what I think. Their lifestyle, where they are well, in yeah, life. Well, everyone, yeah, everyone's in a different place and that's trying to find yeah. two people that are going in the yeah because direction. somebody that's happy with themselves is not going to be like okay so she's cutting me up now like and i totally deserve this they're going to be like this is never going to work out because ultimately they want that relationship yeah. and they're gonna be like no this isn't for me right, right? but mm -hmm. somebody who's desperate and went through like six women like that evening trying to like get a date they're just gonna yeah. be like well she's paying attention to me so okay yeah, I, I would tend to agree that that was, that's probably likely to happen. Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah. So, and that is the difference between a quality person mm -hmm. versus somebody that um, probably needs to be fixing themselves yeah. and not looking for a partner right there. Yeah. Because cutting somebody up is just like, why? I, yeah. I mean, it's unnecessary. Yeah. But I think that's something that happens out of, it's, insecurity insecurity it, yeah it's it's part of even the way they were raised well it's manipulation you know? it's right. well i mean like uh mark has a point uh sometimes we're just we're repeating what we grew up what with we, right mm -hmm. and so like somebody will grow up in a household where the parents are very critical mm -hmm. and so that's the language that they form yeah. is a critical language and for them that's even a, it's even a i love just learned this in therapy today which is um it was it's for my son but i have to go uh when you're raised in a household you take on the culture of the household yes. yeah and not directly what the parents say but like if they're screaming and that's how you communicate, then you're going to grow up with screaming and that's how you communicate. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. And then he was like, that's why you turn into your parents so you're older. And I'm like, oh. I yeah. want to I hear another one of your questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, I love, I love how many you have. That's um, incredible. With, okay, this is your three-month rule. I haven't read your book yet, okay. but... I, I'm sure you may, you may, might have covered it, but I'm sure there's lots of guys that are want to know this question. Yeah. With a three month no kissing rule, mm -hmm. if you make it to the three months, yes, you kiss, yes, and one party doesn't feel a chemistry spark. What do you do? Well, if you make it, so here's the thing: if there's no chemistry or spark by the kiss date, right? Because because the thing is, the reason why you had the conversation in the first place was because there was mm -hmm. an interest because, because there was some chemistry. Right. Yeah. And so I say to people, like when you, when you know that you want, like as a woman, when you know, you want to kiss him and you know, he wants to kiss you. Mm -hmm. mutual. You both, there's a sense that you mutually want to pursue this, to see where it goes, to see if you're compatible. Yeah. So instead of a kiss, you have a conversation. Okay. I like you. I want to see where this goes, but I don't kiss anybody. I don't know. 
because if I kiss you and somebody else says, can I take you out? I'm probably going to say I'm seeing somebody because mm -hmm. I'm kissing you and I'm making plans to see you again. I'm probably going to kiss you again. Yeah. So there's, there's a part of me that feels committed to you and is unwilling to start seeing somebody else because then maybe I'll kiss, you know, like yeah. most women will only kiss one man at a time. Most women nowadays, right? We were talking about how it's not like how it used yeah. to be. Most women are now kissing to see where it goes. Yeah. Um, so you have a kiss instead of a conversation. Um, what was your question again? Because I feel well, like fear. If, if you get to that three month point. Right. So you, so you had that chemistry. So you have the conversation instead of the kiss. You're seeing each other. And then you, you hit, by the time you get to that three month anniversary, the chemistry has fizzled. If it's fizzled, if it's if it hasn't been a build up, mm -hmm. if it's been a de escalation, then you just don't have the kiss. But if it's been a build up and you're doing like, like you keep stopping yourself and kissing because you want to kiss them so bad, and that's what happens yeah. when it's somebody that the more you get to know them, the more it's building, the more the chemistry is growing, and you're being affectionate because he's making you happy. So you're letting him know you're touching him. You're, you're telling him what a great person he is. And you're, you're not just saying the greatness you're communicating with your physicality, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, when, when we feel affectionate, we should be affectionate yeah. and, and no kissing doesn't mean don't be affectionate. So the chemistry should with, with the person that you're going to kiss, it should be an escalation for three months. I, I understand the escalation. Part. Yes. That's, that's so, not, so it's then, when people get to that point and then it's like, hey, okay, so let's go be one step yeah. beyond kissing the sex yeah. okay. and the sex is lousy. That's where you teach. That's, I don't think the first time like, you, can, you can't write it off the first yeah, time. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I don't think you second. can write it off the first time. Why are you blushing? No, no. A hundred percent on that. You can't write it off the first time because yeah. it's Don't awkward know. for everyone yes. the first time. I should be, Kim and I were talking about that earlier. But right? it's it's one of those things where, <laughs> I mean, I think just most men and women want good sex. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't, so, I would, I would write off the first time automatically. Yeah. To be honest with you, if you were into the person. Oh, of course. I would, yeah. I would if, write if it off into, the first time and, the then, and then try again later. Yeah. No. And, and that's just what I ask is because some people will get to the kiss and for some reason, it's like, oh my God, he can't kiss worth. Oh, but and you know, know what? That's okay. It could, so, be, in it could that. be the first yeah. time too. Yeah. Like there's a lot, like you guys are so built up. Like yeah. I just don't believe the first time should be mm -hmm. um, yeah. judgment. Uh, so I do, I do stress the importance of realizing that you know, some of us are less tongue, some of us are major tongue. Yeah. Right. And so when those two ways come together something has got to give yeah and i because i normally talk to women i i i teach women how to teach a man how to kiss mm -hmm. and so the way that that happens is so you've had this build up and you've been communicating through touch so you know you're compatible in touch right yeah. because if you're enjoying her touch and she's enjoying yours there is a physical compatibility already mm -hmm. which will make sex better by the way right because because you're touching each other in ways that are pleasurable and enjoyable yeah. you're just not taking it to a sexual level yeah. it's still sensual it's still intimate but you just don't introduce the chemical that makes your brain Go. forget the red flags yeah. um and so what i say is somebody needs to take over that kiss mm -hmm. and direct it and and so somebody needs to stop the kiss in that moment. Mm -hmm. So when, because if I kiss, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, like my tongue comes later, mm -hmm. it's lips first and then tongue as you get more passionate yeah. into the kiss. So when I kiss somebody who's like, la, 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 mm -hmm. right from the get go and I, I think most mm -hmm. of us have been there. Um, when you come in and that mouth inhales your face, you lean back, you break the kiss. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't tolerate it. You don't put up with it. You don't let yourself go into a space where you're like, oh, he's really great, but that sucks. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to pull back. I'm not going to explore this relationship. That kiss should not break the relationship. You need to break the kiss 
just and just pull back just mm -hmm. far enough that you don't break the intimacy yeah so you still remain in the intimate space so you break the kiss you maintain an intimate space you make eye contact and you go let me kiss you and then usually they're going to come at you full on face again and then inhale your face and then you do the same thing because you just need them to understand they need to relax so that you can show them your technique yeah okay and then and even like i've said just close your eyes and open your mouth like when they're not getting it when yeah. they say let me kiss you and it's a third time let me kiss you and they're still inhaling my face, mm -hmm. then I give more direction. I say, just close your eyes and open your mouth. And then they do that. And then I show them with my mouth how I like to be kissed. Okay. And I did that with my husband and he caught on very fast. Mm -hmm. In all my other relationships, I felt like the better kisser. Mm -hmm. In this one, I feel like he's the better kisser. Well, I, I think that's, I mean, especially if the com compatibility is there mm. i think both parties want to be able to please the other partner a hundred percent and if, yeah you know i think that's that's normal yes you know but i think it's just that yeah. that spark i mean even on the yeah. first kiss there's got to be that mm -hmm. you know it's got to be there because if it's yeah. not that it's it's i think that i think a lot of people would find that to be a major letdown yes you know yeah, I've waited three months for this. And don't then... forget about nerves. Yeah. Oh, you know no, what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. And and then and like too, maybe she's sweating profusely and she's just like, oh, yeah. I can't do this right now. But you you can't you know, come you in. You can't come into a relationship thinking there is no training involved. Oh, there's definitely training. There is yeah. on 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 levels, mm -hmm. right? So there's the physical level, there's the mental level. Like there's you know, so you teach them how to treat you, you teach them what yeah. you need you teach them how to kiss you if you need to mm -hmm. okay. i think everything gets better in time anyways. oh it does it does so people need to just be patient they just need to relax yeah. and just kind yeah. of let it flow like that's yeah. the thing with people these days they don't just let things happen they're just well no because you're only oh. swipe away from something else well exactly yeah right and then you just yeah. and then you're 45 and you're like i don't know why i can't be in a relationship because yeah. you're just doing this you're only a swipe away from something else with someone with a short attention span. Mm -hmm. Like if you're well, that, that, that's quality, exactly what yeah. a lot of these Bumble and Tinder are teaching people now, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's unfortunate because that's making that's making everything, you know, mm -hmm. so hard and people that people that want to date. You know, the funny thing is, like, how old are you? I'm Mark? 38. Okay, um, so then like millennials, they're in their 20s they're saying the same thing they're actually saying yeah. i'd rather meet people in person than meet yeah. them online mm -hmm. um so yeah so give me another question okay yeah. um okay there's a quote that i i often see on on mm -hmm. facebook and instagram and it says something like, if he makes your heart skip a beat or gives you the butterflies, walk away from him. He's not the one for you. Why? What are your thoughts on that? I think that's 100% wrong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that because, um, like, remember how I said if a yeah. woman came up to you in a coffee shop and said, come mm -hmm. cut down my trees? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that I tell them to do is, is, follow your intuition mm -hmm. and your intuition is that skip that yeah. you feel the butterflies. And when you look across the room and, and you see somebody and you feel butterflies, go up to them, go up, do not walk away. This is the one you go to. This is the one that you don't talk yourself out of approaching, mm -hmm. right? Because so many of us, both men and women are looking at, you know, whatever gender that they're interested in, mm -hmm. And they're seeing somebody that they find attractive and they talk themselves out of going up and talking to that person. They say these words that are just, they're killing your potential for a relationship. They're saying, there's no way they're single. There's no way that person is available. I'm not going to go up and talk to them. 
So yeah, you got the butterflies. I mean, look for rings and yeah. males. <laughs> Why? Can you answer this for me? Why doesn't this matter? Um, I think a lot of it is every guy is just looking for that, you know, that one dishonest woman. <laughs> or, the, like, or the unhappy or, woman. Or the unhappy right. woman, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's it's one of those, it's a challenge. Mm. Almost. Um, <gasps> That's interesting because you know, they say that men who wear wedding, wedding rings are more likely to get hit on. I, I would believe that. I could believe that. Hmm. Um, oh, wait a second. But for different reasons, though. Okay, go on. Well, I, I was married once, hmm. um, and I never wore my ring because of the type of work that I did. Hmm. Um, it would, you know, it was it stayed in the jewelry box because I didn't want to lose it. And that was just the way it was. But that didn't change my, my loyalty, mm -hmm. my commitment. Um, I think a lot of it is, I think, yeah, it's just men are just conditioned that if they see a good looking woman, ring or no ring, they'll make the attempt. I you know? noticed. <laughs> yeah. Just not like not generally talking but, about but me, I mean, but, it but just... I, think, I think there's, you know, it's one of those things you can tell whether they're flirting or not as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, I think flirting is normal all the way around. Yeah. Um, but at what point is it cross the line with a married woman or a man, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I think from the women's perspective, they see a man with a ring on his finger, they figure, okay, well, he's the committed maybe type. he's got his shit together. Yeah, yeah. that, that, um, yes, it, it is an indicator of his willingness to commit and his ability to find mm -hmm. A woman who will commit back. Yeah. But why? Why what? It's why would you do? I don't. Maybe I'm just different. But like, why would you? Yeah, as a woman, like I would be like, Ugh. and then if I oh. see somebody with a kid, I'm like, Ugh. you know, like <laughs> just like no, no, no. Like if you see a man with yeah. a ring and a kid. Well, yeah, I wouldn't okay. even like think twice about it. Yeah. You know, I would just be like gone the other way. I'd be yeah. like, I'll just get my free drink from somebody else. You know, yeah. like, yeah. like I wouldn't even, I, I don't, I don't like drama. Maybe that's it. Yeah. I don't want to be the other woman. Like I don't, there's a lot of things that maybe it's worthiness. Maybe I, I'm, I feel like I'm worth a but, certain thing. But, but I mean, thing, that, right? that's also a sign of self-respect and respect for others. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, so it just it depends on the person. Yeah, people looking for that seriously need to do some self care mm -hmm. because yeah, that's just totally wrong. Like I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't use my child as bait either because mm -hmm. I, you no. know, you see guys doing that, and it's, to me, it's just a turn off. Like I'm interested in you, and then eventually your children will like come into play kind of after. Like. I'm, I'm going to say, I don't think every man out there is using their child as bait. I think it's just a way of, um, you know, Bring with, it to with, with an image, letting a woman know like how multifaceted his life is. Like, it's not just, mm -hmm. you don't just have to contend with me and my job and my friends and my yeah. hobbies and my pet and my car. You also have to contend with my children and their mother. Yeah. Well, fair Which, enough. I think it, I think it depends on how it's presented. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Right. Because if it's like a first time, if it's a profile with a mm -hmm. kid right away, I mean, I'm not talking it's, about yeah, Facebook. No. I'm not yeah. talking no, about Facebook. No. I'm talking about yeah, like dating, dating sites. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Women have no, or children have no, no place being on. No, dating. it's, it's kind of different if it's like no. a, maybe a group shot or something like, mm -hmm. you know, but like the first picture but, but you see. But even then I would go like, as far yeah. to say is block, block your children's face out. Like mm -hmm. to me, that's just. And, this but this day and age, everybody has kids. Yeah. Like, like realistically, mostly but be responsible everybody about has kids. Be, be responsible. That's what being a responsible parent is. Yeah. He's not exposing your kids yeah. to my child that doesn't like he doesn't like me to post him on Facebook. Yeah. Like I really yeah. don't post my one kid because he doesn't want me to. And the other yeah. one I do because it just it falls into our, our lifestyle, yeah. right? So I mm. mean, you know, some kids don't like it either. Okay, that this will lead me to another question. Is there is there no go for it? Yeah, or? do it. This is one that um I've I've noticed there was a there was a post on on um, 
the group there, I think it might have been last week, and it's, I've noticed that many women aren't attracted to dads or single guys with kids, yet the woman has kids of her own. I saw that. Nobody I mean, wants to deal with the drama of the mama. <laughs> no, I, I, I get that. But I have an excellent relationship with my son's mother. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where people have to understand that everyone has their dynamics. Some, some people hate each other. Some people still have good relationships with their ex-partner. They just couldn't do the marriage. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just... It's one of those things where I think, you know, it, it makes it makes me curious as to, you know, how people can, oh, well, you know, if there's five years difference between the children, is that really? I think it's their loss. Yeah. Honestly, I think good riddance. Yeah. Like if she's going to bypass you because, you know, you have kids yeah. and she's got kids and she expects this and that, like, sorry. Yeah, because I, I mean, there's, and it also leads to, I don't, men don't want these women that they're trying to meet to raise their children. Mm -hmm. That's that to me is a fallacy. Yes. Um, do not parent other people's children. No, don't. No. If the, they have a mom, they have a dad. And that's, that's what I like about, yeah. about coming into a relationship where he has kids mm -hmm. is I get to enjoy the fun parts. Yeah. And then when trouble starts brewing, I get to step back and let mom and dad deal with it and yeah. be the disciplinarians and there's literally been, I've been with my husband for 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, his kids are now 21 and 22, if I got that right. I hope so. Um, I don't do birthdays, <laughs> so not even my own. Uh, so, you know, literally there was three times in 12 years. And, and this was when they were much younger, mm -hmm. um, where I, I chimed in. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had an agreement with my husband where if you have said, you need to quiet down three times. I do number four. Mm -hmm. And when I do number four, it's you guys need to be quiet. And if I have to take your phone away right now, I will. And then because as the, as the person who never says anything, then when you do, it carries a lot more weight. But you know, it, if, if you are, you have to have an agreement, you have to be in agreement with the parent mm -hmm. and, and you, you, you do it softly because you are not the disciplinarian. You're not, not the mom. You're not the dad. You let mom and dad be mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. So you're finding though mm -hmm. that women are not interested in you because you have kids. But yeah. Well, is, is it said like what gives you that impression? Um, well, it's just some of them. Uh, I don't want to say it's just one of those things where it's like I, I was dating this girl years ago. And her kids were, I would say, three or four years older than mine. And she's just like, well, I don't want to go through raising another child. And that's me, what that's I was thinking. Like, yeah. You know, I'm not asking you to raise my mm -hmm. child. That's, yeah. you know. So, I, I mean, to me, there was obviously more to it than just that. But to use that but, as a, as a, yeah, a, as a crutch or a scapegoat. I, I don't, well, you like know? when you, when you said that, my first thought was mm -hmm. exactly that. Mm -hmm. is is I'm busy raising my kids mm -hmm. I've got x number of children I feel like I'm tapped out in terms of what I can give for mothering mm -hmm. and so I feel like if I get in a relationship with somebody with a child I'm going to have to mother more and that's and that's false that's what oh, that's really what yeah. I'm saying really? that men don't want other women to mother their children but generally I'm this is just a general mm -hmm. comment most guys only get their kids twice, like yeah. one weekend and then yeah. the second weekend in a month. So that's four days, mm -hmm. like realistically. And yeah, I'm, I, I mean, generally not... that's how it works. Like that's yeah. how it worked in my situation. And, and me as mom had, well, now I have my boys a hundred percent of the time. So my situation is different because mm -hmm. I don't, my kids don't have a father. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think dating a guy who has kids is completely different than dating a woman that has kids. Mo like most of the time, generally yeah. speaking. Right. Generally, generally. So to not give a guy a chance, um, if he's in that scenario makes absolutely no sense mm -hmm. because what you can't give up two weekends or you can't. Do well, it's, stuff. it's, I mean, you know, women do need to take the time to figure out who the human being is in front of them, both mm -hmm. men and women, right? Yeah. Because there are, 
there are some guys, selfish short-term thinkers, who are looking for women to come in and mother their kids so mm -hmm. they don't have to parent anymore kind yeah. of thing, right? And then there are men who are like, no, no, no. Like, we got it under control. You're going to be my companion, yeah. but not their mother. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, ideal. I'll give you an example. Um, I'm one of those dads. I have my child when I'm not working mm -hmm. um, because I leave at 5 in the morning. I'm not going to pay a nanny to come in and look after him for, so yeah, for me, a dream is that I meet a woman where it goes well mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, she says, you know, maybe if I get him two days, every couple of weeks that she'll look after getting him on the bus and getting him home from school, right. but it's not my expectation mm -hmm. of her to raise him. Um, and that, and that's, that's, that's been difficult uh, well, for me because right. I, I have to actually give up my, the time that I want to be with my son because I have to go to work. Right. You know, so it, it's kind of, I'm in a catch 22 where it's not the situation that I want. Yeah. It would have been a 50, 50 joint custody situation had my career been different. Yeah. You know, so what you're kind of, you know, when you say, um, you know, see him off to school mm -hmm. and then be there when he gets home kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is this is like down the road when yes. you're living together yes. oh, yeah. or yeah. spending this nights is not, together. Not, uh, and... Next Tuesday, by any means. Yeah. This is after they've met, and a lot of it depends on how good their relationship is. Yeah, you know, because I know blended families are not they're not easy. They're yeah. they're difficult. Yeah, you know? but if a woman loves you, then well, she'll like. I I can I can only speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I would totally do that because, well, I'm sort of an empath, so you know, I do anything, mm -hmm. right? Like it just that happens but like i i wouldn't really see somebody if they really loved you why they wouldn't take the time to you know make sure your son is yeah on the bus to do the things that make you happy yeah yeah, yeah like and you know what and yeah. sometimes that's part of balance yeah. like well that's you know you do this for me and then i buy you a car or whatever order. right yeah what mm -hmm. i think it totally depends on the person mm -hmm. and i think that anybody that um says that they won't do something because they're living in a box because they want their life a certain way they're missing out yeah like they're you never know like life well, is about risks some people know their limitations though yeah but like, you know what yeah. limitations change challenges yeah. change <laughs> like like i never knew i would do the things that i've done in my life kids mm. grow up Right, like, that's, and that's the they, thing too, yes, right? Up. Like, I mean, they were nine, ten when I came in the picture, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and and this was like, I, I got in a relationship with a man mm -hmm. who had kids, and I, I observed what he wanted with them, which was parent them and raise them and mm -hmm. and you know, kind of guide them into being productive young adults. Um, and I looked at how he was doing that, him and his ex. Uh, I looked at how he was protecting them. Mm -hmm. And I respected all of that. And I told myself, I'm not going to expect to live with him for 10 years until yeah. the youngest reaches 18. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I prepared myself for that, for him wanting to raise them before truly settling into a relationship. Yeah. And... So that's kind of some of the things that women need to consider when they're getting in relationships with men mm -hmm. is the boundaries yeah. and, and sometimes just anticipating boundaries. Um, so just really understanding how they want to parent and then, and then really stepping back and letting them do that. And there's a little bit of sacrifice involved. Um, but one thing that I say about good men is, is, is the marshmallow thing. It's you sacrifice one marshmallow today to get two marshmallows later. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about this? I was hoping I've, you I've, say no, so I could explain it. I've, I've heard tidbits <laughs> of it, but I, so no, I haven't. I haven't heard the yeah. whole. Um, so what researchers did is they found out that they could find out if somebody has impulse control very early. So when kids are four, you can find out what their impulse control is. So they would have they would bring in really young children, and you know, they bring young children into like a room, and they gave them a marshmallow, and they said this is your marshmallow you can eat this it's up to you i'm gonna leave and come back in 20 minutes if you haven't eaten your marshmallow i'm gonna give you a second marshmallow 
And the kids who had impulse control didn't eat the first marshmallow and got two. Mm -hmm. And the kid who didn't ate the marshmallow. So when it comes to a relationship with a man or a woman, a generous long-term thinker, you need to delay gratification because that kind of relationship requires that you need to sacrifice one marshmallow today to get the two marshmallows down the road. So when you're dating somebody, a man with kids, a woman with kids, it involves a level of sacrifice to let them raise their kids the way they want to do it, to stand back and be patient, wait for your turn. Mm. Because when the children are lo no longer children, when they are adults, then that parent will turn to you and say, it's our time now. Yeah. And then the relationship hits a whole new level and it's worth it. Whatever happened to going with the flow? Just well, it's, it's like, just yeah, go with the flow. So going with the flow, right? So, I mean, I, I divide us into three parts, your biological body, your logical mind, your spiritual connection. And I say you need to use your logical mind to get the relationship to find that spiritual connection that you're looking for. Like my husband and I literally send each other pictures um, from, you know, I was meditating one day. I realized, oh, like just it popped in my head. Oh, I, I need to go feed my husband. And I saw myself walking up the sidewalk that goes up to his shop door. So I called him and he said, I was just about to call you to warn you about the hose laying across the sidewalk when you brought me dinner. So, you know, that's the yeah. kind of like we we're dialing into yeah, each you're, other you're tuned in. all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, going with the flow is going with your biological body mm -hmm. and it's just responding to that and doing whatever it is that it wants to do. But the logical mind isn't coming into play. So if you're not elevating from the biological body to the logical mind, it's a lot harder to find that spiritual connection. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well then. <laughs> Give me another question, okay. Greg. Um... Oh, do you have some comments here? Uh, Stephanie D says all online dating people are swiping into the next and are continually doing so. And then she says, I should say most are. And that is true. And that's the short attention span that we've been talking about. That's been, it's, it's being conditioned into us with, like when you watch TV, count the seconds until the scene changes. It is shorter than six seconds. I don't even watch TV anymore, mm. like at all. And I mean like at all, just and Netflix here and there while I'm eating dinner. Well, I don't watch TV and I meditate and I can write three books in a year. So Mark, give me a question. Um, how important do you think the love languages are? So important. Um, okay. Do you know yours? Uh, I know one of them. Words of affection. Words. Uh, um, so physical affection. You, you, you took two yeah. and you put them in one. So physical affection, words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, acts of service. Let me ask you this. How important do you think the love languages are? I think they do help. Mm -hmm. if you can if you can but it's not as easy to actually see what people because some people say oh yeah it's words of affection but it doesn't like it can be tricky you know people say oh yeah well I want gifts and, and then they get it and it just ends up on the shelf so it's, yes. that's not yeah your love language. so and that's exactly it is until you do the five love language quiz. So go to Google, type five love, love language quiz, click on images. You're going to find it. Just go ahead and do it. There's a 10 question one. There's a 30 question one. I recommend doing the 30 question one because, you know, I don't know, but chances are you're going to get closer to a love language. There's maybe a, a third more potential that you'll get it wrong if you do the 10 question one. Um, the reason why you want to know what it is, is so that you, so that you know what to fight for. Um, because if, because people think they want a certain love language, like they see their friend getting a gift and they go, I want that too. And so then they ask their partner for a gift. They put the gift on the shelf and they say, you don't love me enough because it didn't fill their love bank. If you know what your love language is, you will specify what it is that you need. Yeah. I need you to put your arms around me and tell me everything is going to be okay. Instead of, I need you to take me out to dinner for yeah. me to feel better, right? So you know how to ask for the things that make you feel better. Mm -hmm. And then you take the rest and you divide it among your friends and family. But do you think that from person to person that you're dating or in a relationship with, that can change? No. No. I think, I think... 
Um, I don't, I don't think it's the people that you're with that changes your love language. I think it might change as you evolve, but you are who you are. That's what I think. Um, so yeah. I, I don't think but we're we grow. static. I don't think we're static. I think we are dynamic beings, which means that even our DNA can change. Your aura usually always stays like the base. Stays Does the it? Oh, I and then around it changes. Okay. Oh, I need to find out. Well, because you, color. you, uh, who you are aesthetically or whatever is who you are. And you can't your soul is your soul. That. You can't change that. Artists but as you can. evolve, things change. So yeah. that would be why your aura would change, right? Because yeah. you're evolving as a person. Yeah, but certain things can also affect your chakras, which will actually, yeah. you know, like mine's, mine's getting, mine's fast, changing colors. Changes. Um, so, and to go back to your question, knowing your partner's love language means, you know, how to make them happy means, you know, how to fill their love bank. Um, once I found out that my husband's love language was acts of service, the word yes started coming out of my mouth fast. So the, I went from, you know, like he, and, and we were fighting when I was doing this, but he'd say, can you do this for me? And I'd say, maybe. And when I learned what his love language was, he'd say, can you do this? And I'd say, yes, baby. Like, like right away, yes. Because I knew that any other answer would make love. Yeah. Give me another one. Okay, I think I'm getting close to the end. <laughs> um, how do you overcome the jadedness about dating? And no, I'm not going to uh, <laughs> look for a girl named Jade. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Um, you need to release the outcome. Because if, if I were to take the word jaded and turn it around, is it not disappointment? Um, yeah. I mean, I think what happens is people just become indifferent about it to us after a certain point. Um, it just, you know, over trying with different people and dating and dating and dating. And then it just becomes a point where it's like, yeah, whatever. If it yeah. happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's, okay. I would yeah. go with the flow. Well, yeah. And, and that's, <laughs> that's in, what's end up happening. Yeah. People just go with the flow because. But haven't okay. you met all these so, new people by going through the, like, like even us? Like, oh, yeah. Well, by getting out there? Well, yeah. And, right? and, and it's been one of those things where I've had to force myself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't force yourself, um, I hope Justin's watching because he's he's one that's got to get out. Well, I'm taking him know. to breakfast. Yeah, I know you are. Nice. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah. that's but I think that's the thing, and it, then it doesn't make it so harsh. Like you're like, you yeah. go out, it, you meet somebody, you connect, yes. but and then it's different. I think I think there's a lot of people in the group though that are introverts. Well, that's so, why they got to so, challenge I mean, themselves. They have to challenge themselves, but it's not mm -hmm. easy to tell an introvert to just go out and challenge yourself because. Yeah. February 5th, people. February 5th, <laughs> Catherine Grant is going to help you. There we go. Yeah. That's life, yeah. though. You got to take a risk. And I'm sorry if you have like anxiety and all this stuff, but you have to figure it out. And then you have to just like, I'm going to say everybody goes through a period of like depression. Oh, and yeah. we all get nervous and yeah. we all have this. And like, and that's part of why I never liked dating is I would build up so much nerves mm -hmm. because I don't like going places by myself. Right. Like you would never catch me going to Bobby's by myself yeah. ever. And, um, I think within like the last year and a bit with all the stuff I've been having to do and meeting new people now I'm like, Meh, whatever, like it is what it is. So if you don't challenge yourself, you'll always be in that rut. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no question that you have to challenge yourself. Um, but it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, at the end of a long day, you know. You don't want to waste time. No, no, you don't. Yeah, you so um, I, I kind of want to re-say what it is that you're saying, mm -hmm. um, just because it wasn't what I first thought it was, mm -hmm. which is like getting pissed off about the process yeah yeah which is so what you're so is it getting pissed off or is well, it just, just saying just or is it just it's just it's, losing yeah, interest it's altogether just losing interest, just you know because there's um, same old same I, ha I haven't yeah. dated i've had maybe one or two dates in the last year and and for the most part for me it's just been me you yeah. know like i'm not i'm not out there 
you know, pounding the pavement to get the date. I'm just. And you want to be efficient. You know? Yeah. Right? Like you don't, you don't want to be wasting time no. and spending months getting to know somebody yeah. to realize it's no, like we're not compatible. Um, and so, and this is a word that I often use in my practice is being efficient. This, this is why I say hold back on the kissing because you become very inefficient with your time mm -hmm. when you spend too much time with the wrong person. And so when you don't put yourself in a position to miss the red flags, you spend less time with the wrong people mm -hmm. and you're staying open for the right people. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be three months. Like really what I'm saying is, is wait and vet mm -hmm. instead of kiss and vet. And, and to be honest, like there are probably 5% of people that I work with that actually did the whole three months. Mm -hmm most people don't go the whole three months, but it makes them think it yeah. makes them stop and it makes them think. Mm -hmm. And so here's my advice for getting more efficient. First of all, know who you are, know what you offer. And that's a writing exercise mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know, I think some women and some men are undervaluing themselves and that's why they're getting in the wrong relationship they're they're picking someone equal to what they think of who they are yeah. and so they're picking the they're picking people who make them unhappy because they're not happy yet because they don't realize how amazing they are mm -hmm. and so clarifying how incredible you are elevates yourself therefore elevates what you're looking for so get in so a relationship you, with yourself get in a relationship with yourself yeah. there's a writing exercise that i advise women do which is writing out i am statements 50 of them that are positive and it's, it's, I mean, most people get to 25 and then they got to start thinking hard. Mm -hmm. That's the point because it's easy to come up with the surface good. Mm -hmm. You got to dig deep dig to, deep get to get the, 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 good the fundamental yeah. good. Yeah. And you want to know your fundamental good so that you know what you're putting on the table. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you need to know what you're looking for so that you are quickly realizing, is this the right person or the wrong person? Mm -hmm. But what that also does is it sharpens your antenna so you know like when you're dialing through a radio yeah. remember back in the old days mm -hmm. <laughs> remember, remember, oh, so once upon a time uh radios had a knob that you would turn and then it would hit stations and you'd pick the station that you wanted and it was picking up frequencies right mm -hmm. when you fine tune your antenna it means that you're sending out a signal that is clear and people can hear it and then they're going to be pulled in. Mm -hmm. And so when you know what you're looking for, you have sharpened your signal. Mm -hmm. And now people are starting to hear that signal. And if it's a station that they like, they're going to keep listening. They're, they're drawn in, in yeah. right? And so they will start appearing in your path. And I know you're into this stuff because you're talking to me about chakras. Yeah. Do you meditate? Uh, not as regularly as I should have, but I used to okay. quite regularly. Yeah. So you're 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 there. You mm -hmm. just need to pick up the habit again. Mm -hmm. This will further sharpen your antenna because it's going to send the signal out further. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's I'm I'm out of questions. Nice. Um, Write a list. <laughs> Bring yeah. this to the universe about yeah. what you want. I already have. Mm. So. How long is it? A couple pages. That was good. <laughs> okay, then yeah, I don't I, need to I, say I like make to, it longer. I, I like to write, so. Yeah, oh, it's, good. It's one of those things. Yeah. That's not, uh, yeah. And yeah. you want to be exhaustive yeah. on that list. You really do, because every relationship will, requires compromise. Mm -hmm. So your list needs to have wiggle room. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be superficial. Catherine Graham. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Throw it out. Make another one. <laughs> All right. Well, and I don't see any questions on here. No more questions from you, Mark. No, I'm. Thank you Yay. very much. For awesome. Yeah, me. and uh, don't forget, we will see you February twelfth, and it's going to be it's super insightful, and it's not just going to be about what you think because mm -hmm. it's not going to. It's going to be about lots of stuff, right? It's a mingle. Yes. So from six yeah. till seven is dinner. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to come to the seminar, but you kind of want to see what's going on, you are more than welcome to come and have some drinks and apps with us. 
And uh, at seven, I will be kicking you out unless you're staying for the seminar. <laughs> so, yes, it's going to nice. be great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate and, it. And thank you guys for watching. And we will see you on the 12th. And we will see you online. We will see you everywhere. And February 15th, we will see you at Dos Tequilas for our singles night. Have fun, you guys. Good night. Oh, and then they get to watch me end this. <laughs>